KLM and SAS are two of the most popular airlines in all of Europe, but which of the two is actually better and which should you fly? Well, I'm gonna be taking a flight on each of these airlines to answer that very question, but throughout this video, nothing ends up going to plan. Up first today, I'm gonna be flying KLM and I have never flown them before and I have no idea what they're gonna be like. And so far last night when I did the online check-in experience, so far we got off to a pretty good start. After getting the check-in email, I was brought to the main website to agree to their baggage policy, ignore their upsell attempts, pick my seat for the flight, and then I was all checked in. So now that we're all checked in, we have to head inside the airport and grab our boarding pass. But I'm in Frankfurt right now, and I have no idea where to go in this airport, so hopefully things go to plan. And trust me, throughout this video, pretty much everything ended up not going to plan. But before then, I made my way into the airport to try and find a KLM desk to grab my boarding pass. Some bad news, I've been walking around this airport for like 15 minutes now, have not found a single check-in counter that says KLM. So fingers crossed we can find a kiosk to use. And honestly, I was shocked that I couldn't find a KLM desk in this entire terminal, but I did manage to find a kiosk. So after selecting my airline and typing in my booking reference, I was able to print out my boarding pass for the flight. So luckily I was able to print off my boarding pass without any issues. And on top of that, I think I'm also in the window seat, which is awesome. And now all we have to do is head through security. And on the other side, there's supposed to be a KLM lounge. So we're going to check that out. But hopefully security doesn't take too long because this line is insane. And that's because as far as I could possibly see, there was a line of people waiting to get through security, where some of them had been waiting for an hour. And this was before even getting to the main line, meaning if I didn't do something crazy, I was gonna miss my flight. But that's when I discovered a secret in plain sight, which allowed me to skip by everybody and make my way into the main area. All right, so I just pulled the finesse of the century. So basically the line for security was give or take an hour if you were in the economy class, which is exactly what I was supposed to be in. But then I walked to the front of the line and I discovered they had a fast pass line. So basically, I searched up the website, got a QR code, and then I was able to skip the entire security line in five minutes, which is great. But then unfortunately, they double searched me and it's the first time it's ever happened in Europe. So it looks like we have to add a point to the tally. But anyways, now that we're finally through security, it's time to find that KLM lounge because apparently it's supposed to be super good. And normally this lounge is only accessible to business class or loyalty members, but thankfully my credit card also gives me access. So it's time we head inside. Right off the bat, there is plenty of room for relaxing with each seat having a power outlet, but there's also designated workstations and also quiet areas too. But now how was the food? Well, for this, there was a ton of light snacks to choose from, various kinds of candy, pretzels, bread, chips, along with plenty of wine. But there was also an entire fridge of bottled drinks and beer, along with more bread, different snacks, and a few hot dishes as well, which all turned out to be pretty decent. All right, so overall that lounge was pretty decent. The food was pretty good. It was definitely German inspired, but still quite solid. The staff were also incredibly nice, and pretty much the only downside was the lounge itself was kind of dated. So overall, I'm gonna give it a solid seven out of 10. And now my flight is supposed to be boarding in about 10 minutes, so we gotta hurry up. But before we go, I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit more about KLM, just in case you have no idea who they are or if you've never flown them before. According to TripAdvisor, KLM is a four-star airline with tons of awards to its name, with the majority of reviews being really good, but there's obviously some bad ones too, which complain about horrible service, that the staff seemingly don't care, and apparently there are a ton of last minute cancellations. But on the other hand, people say you can't pass up the chance to fly on KLM, that they have outstanding service, and that they're one of the best legacy airlines in all of Europe. So obviously the reviews are pretty mixed. Some people love them and some people hate them. So it's gonna be super interesting to see what they're really like. And remember, after the flight on KLM, we still need to fly SAS to see which is actually better. But after getting to the gate, the bad things started happening. Because it turned out the inbound flight had been delayed, which means we wouldn't be making our 2.10 departure time. But eventually it was time to board the bus and make our way to the plane. For today's flight, we'd be doing split boarding, which is always a disaster. And as I boarded the flight, I was greeted by a lovely flight attendant. But making my way through the cabin, people were pushing and shoving by one another since nobody had properly directed them. But eventually I made it to my seat. Right off the bat, since this was a short distance flight on one of their Embraer jets, everything was in a two by two, meaning no in-flight entertainment, which is to be expected, but let's explore the seat. Starting things off by doing the comfort test, the butt cushion was super soft, but when it came to the back and headrest, I have to say that these were definitely on the stiffer side of things. Anyways, making my way under the seat, there was a pretty decent amount of room for bags, with things also being quite clean. And as for the legroom, I'd have to say it was actually pretty solid considering I'm only 5'8". But my favorite part so far had to be this cup holder, which I have never seen on an airplane seat before. All right, so some initial thoughts. Seat, definitely on the stiffer side. Boarding process, a little bit of a shit show. 
I wonder what the rest of the flight's gonna be like. And spoiler alert, things are about to get even worse, and not because of a reason that you would expect. But before that happens, I decided to check out the air conditioning and reading lamp, which was thankfully working. And I was also happy to find that there was a good amount of room for bags in the overhead, which means that nobody would have to check a carry-on, which always sucks. Now where I was seated, I was pleased to see that I had access to two separate windows, which was a huge win. But now what was a huge L is the fact that the onboard Wi-Fi wasn't working well on the ground, because for some reason we had been fully boarded for 15 minutes and we still hadn't moved an inch. All right, so things just got worse. So it turns out the original delay was because they were late coming in from Amsterdam, and now that we're on board, we have to wait for the plane to fuel up. And apparently there's a staff shortage here at Frankfurt, meaning that might take a while. So far, not off to a great start. And now thankfully after saying this, they had arrived with fuel and the flight crew turned on the Wi-Fi. So I decided to check that out, but unfortunately it wasn't free. And even when I went to go and try and buy a voucher to see what the prices were, the website stopped working. So it looks like we won't be using any Wi-Fi on this first flight. But anyways, so Soon enough, the plane was finally filled up and ready to go, and at 2.56, we finally began pushing back from stand to head towards the runway. For the first of two flights, I was going to be flying roughly an hour from Frankfurt to Amsterdam, and soon after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Now that I was in the air, I decided to look around the seat some more, starting with the pouch. Inside, I found a KLM branded waste bag, safety pamphlet for the aircraft, and also a magazine, which had a bunch of information about the KLM fleet, along with some other stuff too. Looking around the seat some more, I noticed there was actually no button to recline the seat, which was a bit of a letdown, but on the plus side, there was coat hangers and also power outlets, which was nice to see. But anyway, soon enough, the crew started coming around for the in-flight service, so I decided to check out the tray table, which was a pretty solid size while also pulling out, so I could enjoy my free water and snack for the flight. So since this flight is so short, we're actually going to be starting our descent soon, so I thought I'd share some final thoughts. Overall, I'd have to give KLM a solid B+. And I want to clarify, this is just my personal experience. It doesn't mean the whole airline, it just means this flight in particular. The seat itself is definitely not the most comfortable, but there are a lot of cool things with it. For example, there's a nice little cup holder, which is a pretty cute touch. On top of that, the in-flight snacks were super good. The flight attendants were pretty nice, and I don't know if it's just because it's like Dutch people, but they're kind of cold in a weird way. Like, they're super friendly, but at the same time, I don't know if they're mad at me or not. <laughs> and pretty much the only other downside that I could think of was obviously the delays, which kind of sucked. And remember, after this flight, we're going to be flying SAS to see which of the two is actually the better airline. So stick around, because you are not going to want to miss that. But now, before we land, there is still one super important thing to check out, and of course, that's the bathroom. Maybe I'm crazy for saying this, but I think KLM has one of the best economy class bathrooms bathrooms I have ever been in. Because not only was it super clean with a decent amount of headroom, but the colors and materials were also pretty high end, which also included the floor, which wasn't sticky at all. But anyways, after getting back to my seat, we had begun our descent into Amsterdam, and before I knew it, we were coming in for landing. And now that we're done on KLM, it's time to try out SAS to see which airline is actually better. And I'm warning you now, it ended up being one of the strangest experiences I have ever had. So overall, I'd have to say that KLM was super solid, especially considering I was on one of their smaller planes. But now it's time for us to try SAS to see which of the two is actually better. And so far, last night when I was doing the online check-in experience, we got off to a pretty terrible start. And that's because unlike the KLM check-in, which went super smooth, the SAS website was completely completely broken, with things refusing to load, and even after refreshing the page, nothing worked, even giving me an error code. So I have no idea why the website wasn't working. For some reason, it was just completely broken. It wouldn't let me pick my seat. It wouldn't let me click any of the options I needed to click. And yeah, it just didn't work whatsoever. So I guess what we have to do now is head inside the airport to hopefully check in and also print out our boarding pass. Let's hope things get better from here. Making my way inside the airport, I looked around for where I needed to go, and the only option seemed to be using the kiosks for checking. After selecting my airline, I had to type in my booking reference, agree to having nothing dangerous, and then I was able to print out the boarding pass without any more issues for now. Alright, so thankfully the airport check-in went super smooth. I have no idea why the website was freaking out, but at least we got our boarding pass and we're in a window. Now one thing that I'm a little bit stressed about is that my carry-on is 16 kilograms and SAS only allows an 8 kilogram carry-on. So hopefully they don't end up checking it, otherwise we might be a little bit screwed. But now that we have our boarding pass, the next thing we're going to do is head through security and a 
apparently there's a lounge in this airport somewhere, so then we're gonna check that out. And then finally, we get to see how SAS compares to KLM. And thankfully, the airport here in Amsterdam is known to be one of the best in the entire world. So I was able to make my way through security in no time at all. Another airport security and another time getting double inspected by security. This time it wasn't terrible though. They pulled my bag off to the side and they just asked me what my tripod was, so they didn't actually go through any of my stuff. But we're still gonna need to add a point to the tally for that. But anyways, now that we're all through security, I think it's time we find the lounge. But one thing that I do wanna say is I literally love European airports. They are so much nicer than any airport in North America. Canada has some pretty good ones, but most of the ones in the US are just trash. But anyways, it's time for the lounge. So making my way back through the airport, I realized just how good it was because there was an entire plane just chilling on the roof. But after enjoying my stroll, soon enough I made it to the Aspire Lounge. Right off the bat, this place was massive with tons of seating all around with views overlooking the runway and outdoor terrace. But now how was the food? Well, for lunch, there was brownies, a full on salad bar with olives, cucumbers, and all of the other things you would come to expect with that, tons of different snacks, and also a lot of cheese and bread because you know, the Dutch love that. Now as for drinks, there was coffee machines everywhere with tons of wine to grab at any point, but I opted into using this soda fountain and overall I'd have to say that things were pretty good. So overall that lounge was pretty decent. The staff were super nice, it was super modern, and there was tons of room for seating which is awesome. But when it came to the food there was an extremely limited selection, and the food was also kind of interesting. It was mainly just like bread, cheese, and other Dutch things. Which I mean makes sense because I'm in Amsterdam, but overall I'd have to give it a solid 8 out of 10. But now there's only about 15 minutes until my flight is actually supposed to board so I thought I'd take this time and tell you guys a little bit more about SAS just in case you have never flown them before or have no idea what they are. Unlike KLM which had a four star rating on TripAdvisor, SAS is only rated three and a half stars with their reviews being much more mixed. Customers complained about bad service, that they refused to reimburse for damaged bags, that they resold the disabled person's seat and also a lot of delays. But on the flip side people said it was one of the best airlines they've ever flown with, that they have good flights and good landings and one person even said that SAS gave them the best flight they have ever had. So just like KLM, the reviews are super mixed. Some of them are really good, some of them are really bad, but most of them are kind of just stuck in the middle. So I'm actually super excited to see what they're like, because tons of you guys have been recommending them to me, so now it's finally time to try them. And luckily, after making my way through the airport, I was able to find the gate pretty easily, but even though the plane was there waiting, boarding ended up being delayed, and even when it was time to go, it was absolutely chaotic. So far, the boarding process is an absolute shit show. Time to see what SAS is really like. Now, unlike the KLM flight with the split boarding disaster, this one had a normal process, and after making it through the cabin, eventually I made it to my seat. Earlier, the KLM plane was in a 2x2 seating, but this plane had a normal 3x3 layout. But just like the previous one, since this was going to be such a short flight, there wasn't any in-flight entertainment, but this is completely normal. Making my way to the seat, this one was much more comfortable, especially when feeling the padding on the back and headrest because the KLM seat was was definitely stiffer. And another thing that this seat had, which the earlier flight didn't, was a button to recline, which actually had a pretty decent amount of pitch. All right, so I have some initial thoughts so far. Right off the bat, this seat is much comfier than the one on KLM, but the material it uses is way different. This one has some sort of weird fabric, while the one on KLM used some sort of leather. Another thing that this seat has over the KLM one is that it actually reclines with a pretty good amount of pitch as well. But of course, these are just some initial thoughts, and there is still a lot more that I need to explore. And on top of that, we still need to see things like the in-flight service and a bunch of stuff that happens once we're actually in the air. But before we get to that, the next thing I tested was the legroom, which was quite solid and pretty comparable to KLM if I'm being honest. Making my way underneath the seat, I was happy to find that there was plenty of room for bags while also being pretty clean. And unlike KLM, which had outlets down there for charging, there were still some on this flight, but just in a different spot. Turning my attention to the overhead, just like on the earlier flight, this one's reading lamps and air conditioning were both working. And on top of that, the bin space for carry-ons was also a pretty solid size, meaning no need to check those. And now, as for some of the other features, there was also a hanger just like the one on KLM, and being in the window, I had two full-size ones to look at. But at this point, it was now 2.55, and we began pushing back from the gate right on time to head towards the runway. For this flight, I was going to be flying roughly an hour from Amsterdam to Copenhagen, and before I knew it, it was time for takeoff. Now 
Now that I was in the air, I started looking around some more to see what I could find, starting with the Wi-Fi, but sadly, this flight didn't have any unlike the previous one. Checking out the seat pouch, it was pretty damaged, but inside I found the safety pamphlet for the flight, an SAS branded waste bag, and menu as well, which had tons of different snacks and drinks to choose from. So naturally, I got out my tray table, which was a pretty good size, but then there was a slight issue when the crew began coming around. All right, so a super strange mid-flight update. When it came to the in-flight service, the only thing that they served that was complimentary was tea and coffee. For some reason, there wasn't even complimentary water, and the only way you could get water is if you bought it, which is completely different from KLM, where they give you an entire water bottle and snacks for completely free. And this year alone, I think I've flown 23 different airlines, and I have been on a single one where the only thing complimentary they served was coffee and tea. If anything, those are the things you normally have to buy. But anyways, as for some of the other stuff, this seat is actually way comfier than the one on KLM. By this point in that flight, my back was really starting to hurt, but with this seat, I am actually having a really good time. The backrest is comfortable, the padding is great, and overall, I have no soreness whatsoever. And it's also really nice that this one actually reclines too. But anyways, just like the flight on KLM, this flight is also extremely short and there are a few things we still need to check out so we're gonna do that right now and then once we land I'm gonna share my final thoughts on both flights and I'm gonna tell you how much both of them cost me but before we do that it's time for my favorite part the bathroom tour overall this bathroom was just okay being much smaller than the KLM flight from earlier which again was one of the best that I have ever been in but anyways after making it back to my seat you're probably wondering how much these flights actually cost me and for the flight on KLM it cost me $155 Canadian and this flight cost me $160 and even though the SAS seat is much more comfortable the KLM service was a bit more enjoyable so it's hard to choose a clear winner and it really depends what's more important to you and now finally it turns out that we had actually begun our descent into Copenhagen and before I knew it we were coming in for landing and now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and watch this video next where I flew Europe's best versus worst airline